Hi everyone, it's me David, and today we're going to be making a special batch of soap. It's actually going to be two different soaps. I've got two different Christmas presents that I want to make, and I'm going to try and put them in the same mold but have different scents with on either side of the mold. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So what we want to do is we want to make sure we've got everything ready for making the soap. So let's go through the checklist. We've got a measuring cup. We've got our scale to measure everything out. We've got the oil and then the lye that we're going to mix together. Containers to hold those. Safety equipment so we don't get lye in our face. And a stick blender to mix everything together. And then also what we'll need is we'll need a thermometer to make sure that the temperatures of the oil and the lye water are the same. And then any super fats or fragrances or colors that we'll be using. So let's go ahead and start measuring out the oils. So the first oil we're gonna use is coconut oil. And this is the type of oil that you wanna use for a hard bars of soap. This makes a really hard bar of soap. So we've got 8.3 ounces of the coconut oil. And then always a nice complement to the coconut oil is some palm oil. And we've got 8.6 ounces of the palm oil. So the next oil that we're going to be using is castor oil. The reason I use castor oil is because it makes really, really good bubbles in the soap. The problem with it is it makes the soap a little bit harsh, so you don't want to use a lot of it in your soap. And so we've got three ounces of the castor oil. So the next two oils that we're going to be using are our main oils that we want in the soap. And I'm going to use, be using soybean oil and olive oil. So we've got 15.1 ounces of the olive oil. And then finally we've got 15.5 ounces of the soybean oil. So one thing I like to do is to add a preservative to my oil so that the soap stays fresh and has a longer shelf life. I like to use BHT, but you can use rosemary oil or just keep your soap in the refrigerator and that should be good. Okay, so I've gone to metaphysicalfarms.com and I've figured out that we need approximately 16 ounces of water and then we will need 7.4 ounces of lye for this recipe. So I've measured out the 16 ounces of water and we just need to measure out our lye. So let's go ahead and get our safety equipment on. So we've got our 7.4 ounces of lye and you want to pour it into the water. So make sure you are always going from lye into water, otherwise you'll have a mess. Okay, so just from mixing the lye and the water together, it's brought the water up to 186 degrees. So what we need to do is we need to let this cool down to between 110 degrees Fahrenheit and 120 degrees. And what we need to do is go ahead and heat up the oils so that they're about that same temperature as well. Okay, so our lye solution is 120 degrees and the oils are at 115 degrees. Now what I've done in the meantime is I've created our super fats. So what I've got here is I've got a yellow with an orange scent in it, I've got a red with an orange scent in it, and that's for one half of the soap loaf. Now the other half, what I've been doing is I'm creating a fisherman's soap, and this is blue with an anise scent to it. Anise is used to uh, wipe away the human scent so that fish are attracted to your lures and not repelled by the human scent. So this is going to be for a fish soap in the second half of the loaf. So what I'm going to do to be able to accomplish this from this single batch of, uh, of oil here is I'm going to mix the lye into the oil, get it up to trace, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a quarter of it to this, add the, the yellow um, super fat, add that to the loaf, then add another quarter of this, add the red super fat, add it to that same side, mix them together so that they're swirled and so you have some orange and red and yellow throughout the soap. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to take half of this, put it into the other half of the loaf, and then put the blue anise uh, super fat into the rest of the, the jar here, and then mix it into the, the soap loaf so that um, we have a blue swirl on the other side. And so you can see here, all I've done is I've taken a regular a heat safe uh, loaf pan, and I've put a divider in the center of it and that should keep our two soaps separate. 
So let's go ahead and get started mixing. Okay, so we've just about reached trace with this. So what I wanna do is start adding the super fats and getting the colors all swirled together. So we've got one side done um, and I'm just mixing this a little bit together so we've got some swirls and nice shapes in the, the soap um, and we're going to go ahead and start the second half here. So we've got the second half of the loaf finished now and I'm just swirling it around so we have some nice colors. And this one, again, like I said, is for fishing. It will wipe off the human scent because it's got anise in it. And the only thing that's left to do is to go ahead and stick this in a nice warm place and let it sit for about two or three days so that it finishes uh, solidifying. Okay, so it's been two days and the soap is ready to come out of the mold. So all I have to do is take it out and then we're going to cut it. So now that we've got the soap out of the mold, what we can do is we can uh, measure out the loaf and see where we want to make our cuts so that we can have even uh, space bars. Okay, so now that we've got the soap cut, we just have to let it sit for about three weeks so that it can finish drying out and curing, and you should be good to go.